welcome back. Yes, as always, you have me on Tuesdays talking about something sciencey, whether it's in the weather world or it's in the other sciences as well. So, yeah, Newt Cradle, you've probably seen this on TV a million times. You know, the boss's desk has it. He's got it clicking back and forth. It's very, very technical, very cold calculating. You see that in a movie trope all the time. Or My a TV sister trope. and I had one as kids. Oh, really? It was just a toy that we would just, it would just do this. Yeah, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, it just makes the balls clank. Wow, what can we do with this? What can we learn from this? Actually, quite a lot. And if you want to start, I'm going to stop it real quick. We're going to, you can use all of Newton's moat or Newton's laws within just looking at this right now. All right, let's start with that. An object at rest stays at rest. What's this first law? An object in motion stays in motion. However, this one doesn't stay in motion forever but the thought process is there. All right, so object arrest stays erect, arrest, object of motion stays in motion. Look at that, already accomplished. His second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So there we go, you've got the force equals mass times acceleration. And then you can also do it with uh, the third law, every action has an equal opposite reaction there. That's his third law. Now, really the whole point of a Newton's cradle, which was not designed by Isaac Newton. Who was it designed by? I I'm going to butcher the name in French. It's Edme Mariot, a, okay. a scientist but from the 1600s. But because it deals with Newton's laws, it, it carries Newton's laws Newton's laws and the, uh, the, the ideas of uh, a conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, too, right. are also big uh, within physics, too. So, you know, why not name it after Isaac Newton, one of the greatest minds, you know, of the 1600s. So, of course. All right, what are we doing here? You're probably thinking, okay, what's cool? Is it a cool toy? Well, we're going to take this little ball right here, and we're going to take it back. And you're thinking, okay, why does it have the other ball kick out? Because we've all seen this before. Before. This is nothing new. Why does it have only that one ball and not all the balls moving? Now, this one isn't a perfect one. I will say this. In a perfect world, it would literally go from one to the other, back and forth, forever. And I say forever because we have a lot of issues with this one and with almost any single Newton's cradle. There's going to be gravity involved. We have gravity. We can't really not have gravity. I don't right. know. That doesn't. We can't change gravity. Yeah, we don't, That's have, a, we don't, have, we don't have a spaceship. We can't right. change it here on Earth. You also have friction with not only the balls hitting each spot, but also within the, the, string, uh, the, screen, uh, the, the strings themselves, also the air itself. That's another form of friction. You ever seen a rocket ship return to Earth and it really burns up? That's friction causing it to really warm up as it's re-entering the atmosphere of a meteorite doing the same thing too. So things to kind of think about. Also, gravity, uh, we've got gravity, we've got friction. We've got it where the balls, if you look up on the up, tour, up, up top camera, do we have that up there? You can see the balls aren't perfectly aligned. If they were perfectly aligned, they'd have oh, right. perfect elasticity and it would go on for a lot longer. So again, it's kind of off. You can see that one ball kind of off there. So it does mess it up a little bit more here. So, Boy, and I brought this magnet. Yeah, for a different experiment that didn't work out too well. <laughs> but we can use it for this experiment too because this is the unless acted upon by an outside force. So if you get it started, I'll show what happens if I put the magnet there. So all right, and then if I pull this one, oh, changed everything. It automatically changes the stops entire, all yep. the rest of them. Right. We also can pull multiple at a time, yes. right? Like if you pull two, I yes. pull two. Or I'm going to let you pull two and go from there. And notice that one in the middle is supposed to stay centered on model wise. Uh, when you do calculations, it actually works out in a perfect world if you discount all the other forces acting on the outside. So again, not a perfect instrument, but it does demonstrate that you have that conservation of the going from kin or potential energy right here, potential, potential, kinetic, 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 and it repeats, 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 repeats. Outside you, force. Outside force, and you just like doing that. You just like, <laughs> I do. She just was like, can we use the magnet? I'm like, sure, we can find a way to use the magnet. So it works out really well. Um, so yeah, that's really the cool thing is that it shows that kind of conservation of momentum back and forth, back, back and, and forth. forth. And again, if we didn't have those other factors that I don't think we have the right studio to kind of get rid of those, sure. it would go on forever. The whole concept is that there's the conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. Uh, and, you know, the materials within Newton's cradle, too, you're probably wondering, why are they metal balls? Why do they keep doing that? Well, the metal balls are really good for getting that force, exerting it back and forth, back and right. forth as a material. It's really useful, too. Um, but it's also because uh, just that uh, it's cheaper to do it with the metal balls and with some other materials as well. I suggested Jacqueline. I was going to say, we you have about to tell doing, them this. Okay, she was like, we should make our own. We should have made our own. And you can make your own. Uh, Out of what materials, Adam? What well, items you, you could, do you need you if you're going to make You could make it from plastic plate. and from metal balls that you find and work from that way. What we had in college, though, and a lot of universities have this, is they had a big setup way bigger than this. We couldn't fit it on camera. Uh, it was rope instead of string. Right. <laughs> Bowling balls. And okay. my professor, my physics professor, uh, Dr. Stanislaus, which loved working with him, even though I wasn't really good in his class. He was a very good professor. Um, <laughs> what he was, he's like, all right, here, watch. He takes the bowling ball 
and you think, okay, it's not gonna, it's like at the tip of his nose, it's not gonna touch it again. Let's it go, and you're thinking he's gonna get smacked in the face, right? Nope, almost touches his almost. nose again. Back and forth and back and forth for quite some time. Well, and this is kind of, it reminds me of like at the Museum of Science and Industry, how they have that big the pendulum, pendulum that swings back and forth and it hits the different, um, Yep. What, what are those little, the, the, the pegs, little, I little guess, pegs, to yeah, try and time. knock the pegs at yep. different times? So not only is this a really cool experiment, it also is something that is useful for things like telling time or for yeah. in college uh, making. I mean, Giant models. Yeah, we. I, I cannot tell you how many times we've done uh, different uh, little, because we did Newtonian physics for first semester, how many times we had just little experiments he would do in class, and how many times I got to be used as a guinea pig. I was the big guy in class, so like, oh, I'll have him do right. it. So I've got one where there's a, we were in lab one time, and I was cutting a board and karate chopping it, and everyone was like, oh, wow, so good. So physics is fun. It's just not my best uh, subject when in uh, class, which is ironic because I was telling Jacqueline, literally meteorology is just physics right. and math. That's all That's it, it is. And uh, one of those two. But you were almost a math major. I was almost a math minor, a math minor, minor, math minor. One, minor, one, one credit, credit away. I decided to do communications. <laughs> it's not like I talk a lot or anything. It's not like it's right. part of my job to talk, so. Well, thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing what experiment we are going to do next week. If you have a question for Adam, you can email him at asherwinski at wcia.com, or you can find us both on social media.